today. Uh, so thank you very much for coming. So for today, um, I know I was just asked, what are we doing here today? So today, um, we are going to be talking about what we want and don't want for developments. So right now, there are 12 developments that are going on uh, the southeast side. Uh, you have a handout uh, that is the blue piece of paper um, that lists all of the developments that are going on. Uh, you may have heard of some of them, uh, like the Obama Library, uh, the CTA Assembly Plant, uh, Southworks, which I hear has a potential buyer again, <laughs> um, General Iron, um, and uh, the Confined Disposal Facility or Toxic Landfill. So there are a lot more. Um, if you want to take a look at all the developments, they are on your blue sheet. Um, and if you don't have it, it's at the back table. So some of these developments are good, and some of them aren't. Some of them may have the potential of bringing jobs or housing or any number of other things that we want, and some of them may not be good. They might be toxic, um, they might be uh, uh, pollute our air, our land, our water. So for today, our goal is we want to have a say in how our communities are developed. We want to have a chance and have a voice of what we want for development and what we don't want for development. And we don't want to be left behind in our communities. So these discussions that everyone is having at the table today are very important uh, because this is us, the community, deciding what we want or don't want. Uh, some of you may have come to our visioning session part one back in October. Um, some of you may have missed that. So I wanted to be able to share uh, some of the things that came out of our last visioning session. Um, for some of you, just kind of jog your memories if you were there. And for those of you who weren't, bring you up to speed. So we had uh, breakout groups in the last session. Um, we had four different breakout groups. We had jobs and training. Uh, which also included uh, local uh, supporting local businesses and entrepreneurship. We had a housing, environment, and education uh, breakout sessions. And folks brainstormed what are some common priorities uh, that we wanted for each of those things. So for jobs and training, and if you want, you can follow along. It's on your yellow sheet. So really quickly, just to recap what came out of the last meeting. Um, for the jobs and training workshop, we talked about majority local hires. At least 50% um, should be local. Uh, the community should define what that local area is. Um, so it may depend on the size of the development, whether we want a small local area or a large local area, but that should be decided by the community. Um, hires include uh, returning citizens. Um, those are folks who have been incarcerated, are coming back to our communities. We want them to be able to access jobs. Um, we want developers to be able to hire local businesses, especially minority and women-owned businesses. Uh, and we want uh, developers to work with the community to develop a jobs pipeline. There are a lot of other bullet points under the jobs and training, but a couple highlights are Hires should also include local residents, minorities, youth, veterans, senior citizens, homeless, single parents, welfare, or Section 8. Um, community benefits agreements should be um, implemented for the developments that we actually do want in our communities. We are not saying that we need it for all the developments, but just the ones that we want. So, and community benefits agreements are legal written agreements between the community or community groups and the developer that outlined the commitments on both sides. So for housing, um, the common priorities that we want 50% uh, of the housing, if they offer housing, to be affordable. Uh, they broke it down, what that means, but they want it to be affordable for our folks that are currently living in the communities. Um, we want 30% of the affordable units to be three and four bedrooms. We know we have a lot of larger families on our side and multiple generations that live together. So we want to be able to make sure that folks have access to that. Um, we want inspections every year of all units, um, especially if it's affordable housing. 
Um, first priority for uh, people to be housed at developments um, if income increases. Uh, let's see. Um, and if you have to get rid of any units, in other words, if you're displacing people, they have to be moved, then you have to replace them um, and return them to the priority area. So in other words, if you're displacing people in the current community, your development has to offer units within your development to those folks that are displaced. Environment. Um, there are a lot of things that came out of environment, so I'm going to just do a couple of the highlights, just like the other ones. Um, so, first of all, the community should be brought to the table to be part of the decision-making process, something that was also said in the jobs and training one. Um, we want them to employ sustainable practices like green infrastructure, uh, lead certification, renewable energies. Uh, we want them to maximize green and open space uh, for local residents, uh, preserve and in some cases restore the natural environment, support healthy communities by keeping our air, water, and land clean, be transparent about environmental impacts, no uh, uh, non-disclosure agreements, right, on the environmental reviews, um, and connect with uh, existing neighborhood or uh, groups and also green environmental initiatives. So I know we also had a, a breakout session for education. Um, but we did not get a write-up from that group, so that's why it's missing, so it's not that didn't happen. Um, but we did not get a write-up from that group. Um, but I do know uh, one of the things that came out of the education one was making sure that there's a pipeline so that our students that are graduating uh, our schools in the area, elementary and high schools, that either they can, um, that they have the skills necessary to be hired at the developer from beginning to end of development. So whether they graduate high school and go right into jobs or they go to college, come back and go right to jobs or they go uh, to vacation, vocational school and come back and get jobs. But anyway, uh, when they graduate, that there's some sort of pipeline and link to the current developments that are going on. All right. So, um, with that said, I just realized I forgot to introduce myself. <laughs> and jabbering at you, and you don't know my name, some of you. So my name is Amalia Anietta Gomez. I'm the executive director uh, for the Alliance in the Southeast. Uh, I'm also the co-director for the Coalition for Southwark CBA. Uh, Coalition for Southwark CBA has that name because we originally started on Southworks, but we have since expanded to other developments, um, some for, some against. Uh, in the area, so don't let the name fool you. We have expanded out beyond the uh, initial Southworks. We're a coalition of uh, over 35 organizations, nonprofits, block clubs, schools, uh, churches, and other nonprofits. Salazar from the Southeast Environmental. Uh, task force and she will be uh, talking about uh, giving some context to developments that are happening on the southeast side compared to developments that are happening in other parts of the city. So, Peggy. Give us a minute to uh, set up our presentation here. Anyway, good morning everybody. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with me, I am Peggy Salazar with the Southeast Environmental Task Force. Our organization has been around in the community for now over 25 years. If you don't know about us, I encourage you to pick up one of these pamphlets from the table so you can under, uh, learn about what we do. Uh, we've been very engaged in the community recently because we always have environmental issues. So. Uh, if you'd like to join us, make sure you pick up a pamphlet. I'm going to talk, now Amalia talked about what does good development look like. I'm going to talk about development across the city and, and what's going on. A lot of people don't always know. So what you're here to discover is, is all development equitable? Is all development good? Uh, Pullman. We're going to compare Pullman and Southeast Chicago. Pullman was designated a national monument in 2015. Some of you may not know that. And so we're going to show and highlight some of the recent developments that are going on in Pullman, which is the ninth ward, not too far from here. 
Argus Brewery. How many of you have been there before? It's a wonderful little place. Uh, it's great. We did a, a tour. It's a lot of fun. I encourage people to go there, but we don't have a brewery in Southeast Chicago, but we do in Pullman. And it's in an old stable that blocked the Switz, I hope I say it right, beer company. So it's really a lot of fun. Go there and see it, but that's the kind of development coming in that doesn't exist here on the Southeast side. Uh, the Pullman Shopping Center, how many of you have been there? We have Walmart, we have Ross, we have other stores. I shop there, it's close, it's convenient, um, it's wonderful. Unfortunately, I believe they used some of the TIF funds from the TIF board to build it, but in any case, it's in Pullman. We don't have anything like that here. Method Plant, this is a real sort of spot in our, well, in my park, anyway, okay? Method Plant makes Method products they're environmentally safe for the environment. Cleaning products, personal use products. You can see it's a wonderful facility. It was environmentally designed. It's beautiful. The, don't, don't pay attention to that scraggly grass. But it's a beautiful place. They have wind generated energy. They have solar power energy. It's, it's really a great place. Could we get something like that in Southeast Chicago? No. Pullman Cafe, another little gem. It's a neighborhood coffee shop. If you haven't been there, go there. They're opened um, only until the early evening, I believe. But it opened up in the last few years because they saw that there were changes going on in Pullman. People were willing to invest money. It's a wonderful little coffee shop. We don't have anything like that in the 10th Ward. Food hall, this is really new. I didn't even know what a full hall was because that's a trendy thing, right? Food hall. Uh, it's a food incubator, a restaurant incubator. Uh, they offer vegan, they offer a bakery. I haven't been there yet, but I'm going there. I encourage everyone to support it. It looks like a wonderful place. It's in Pullman. Pullman Community Center, okay? Looks like another wonderful place. Uh, it's relatively new. I think they just completed it this year. I'm not sure if it's opened yet, but I know that they're gonna offer sports, and it looks like a great place to be. Nothing like that in Southeast Chicago. Gotham Greens, brand new greenhouse, industrial size, okay? It's a spin-off from the Method Plant, because Method Plant in addition to having the method plant on the roof, they actually had a second business, which was Gotham Greens. So they grew leafy greens there. This is going to be growing leafy greens for sale locally to the grocery stores in Chicago, restaurants in Chicago. It's going to be a wonderful place. We don't have anything like it in Southeast Chicago. Indoor track and field facility at Gately Park. Once again, it's going to be brand new. It's going to be open to the public. It looks like a great place to go, especially for youth, I hope. Uh, residents will hopefully use it. We don't have anything like that in Southeast Chicago. Rebuilding of the Pullman Clock Tower. This, if anyone's familiar with the story of Pullman, George Pullman, and how he had this whole little city within the city for his employees. This was historical, a historical building that burned down. They finally got the funding, they're rebuilding it. It's surely going to be a tourist attraction. And what do tourists bring into the community? Money. Money. Okay, we don't have anything like that in Southeast Chicago. Yes. Okay, Peggy, could that two or three slides, was that Gotham Greens, was that the Greens going facility that they were actually proposed putting it on the lakefront of the Southwoods plant and McCaffrey rejected it? That I don't know. Okay. I don't know that stuff. Okay. Uh, Pullman Art Space Lofts, brand new residential buildings, okay, for Pullman. It's going to offer artist space as well as residential space. Again, nothing like that has been built in the 10th Ward that I know of. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, so again, when something, when there is a will to make
make changes to community, you revitalize it, you see what happens. Okay, those are the buildings and what's going on currently there. Now let's look at development in Southeast Chicago. So we can compare. Okay, let's compare. Southworks. Everyone's familiar with Southworks, right? It's been cleaned technically since 1995. Here we are, 2019. And not a single thing has been built there except, to my knowledge, I think they blew some plastic uh, climbing things on the ore wall, uh, if you want to consider that development. I don't even think that rock wall is open for people to use. But you also have to count the road that was built. Okay. A huge public expense. That's true. Okay. So we can go around and avoid bush, I suppose, right? And they finished there and see. But they always did. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Okay. number of proposals, none of them have succeeded. Uh, I do know that we have some urban farming going on over there, but some people will joke and say that's urban development for media. When they make the river channel deeper, they have to dig up all of that uh, sediment from the bottom and they have to put it somewhere because it's contaminated. So they can't put it into Lake Michigan. It is contaminated. So they landfill it. They wanted to do that in the 10th Ward, find 30 acres, and start building up another landfill. We fought it. We were able to stop them from putting an additional landfill, but they're going to expand the existing one. So we already have one here. They're going to make it bigger. Okay, but that's development. General Iron, how many of you know the story of General Iron? General Iron is a huge, one of the largest scrap metal operations in the city of Chicago. Currently exists on the north branch of the river where lots of beautiful things are happening. And so now they don't like it there because it doesn't look pretty and it brings in a lot of nasty traffic and it's a nasty operation. And guess where it's coming? Southeast Chicago. Reliable asphalt. This is another, another type of operation where they reclaim construction waste and debris. So it could be asphalt that they dig up, it could be sidewalks, it could be excavation soils, it could be shingles, it could be anything, okay? Uh, they had targeted one for 100th Street and one for 106th, both on the river. The one on 106th is going through. They're actually constructing it now. This one may not happen. We are fighting it. We slowed up the process. We don't know for sure, but we think that's not going to happen, but it took a lot of effort to stop it. Seven new warehouses. Now, that's not so bad, okay? Because right now that land is empty. But again, it's going to, they're going to be built over a time span of 10 years. So there's no guarantee there will be seven, first of all. Secondly, uh, warehouses, you know, it depends on the type of jobs and stuff they, they actually um, provide. But our concern is more about the amount of tra truck traffic. So maybe one or two or three warehouses wouldn't be so bad, but seven, uh, seven warehouses, all distribution centers could be bad for the community in terms of the number of trucks. How many of you ride or drive or walk past 103rd Street or 130th now? Do you see the number of trucks every day that go through there? So we did an informal truck count and 
in one hour at the 130th intersection. We counted 256 trucks, Jim, is that correct? 256 trucks in one hour went through that inner pass there. What was the inner so, pass? And that's before seven new warehouses. What was the area? 130th in Torrance, the intersection, okay? And we counted different intersections simultaneously because we wanted to make sure we weren't counting the same trucks more or less. And at every single intersection we counted, there were 200 trucks or more going through. So I'm trying to visualize where this is. If I was coming in from like South Holland and I crossed over the river, then that the intersection you're talking about is where that big wall is? Where Ford is, yes. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Right there on Torrance. And we counted at 103rd Street, we counted at 100th Street. I think that was it, right? Three or 106, I can't remember. There were like three or four. Okay, so this may not be bad, but we don't know. Here's another one. Illinois Port Authority is proposing a hotel and boathouse on Lake Calumet. But here's the interesting thing about that. It's right by the expressway. So it's actually closer to Pullman than it is to us, okay? So again, I suspect it's more for Pullman than it is for the southeast side, but it is technically in the 10th floor. Okay, Mary and Burns Natural Area, okay. Okay, they're, they're actually still working on that and I want you all to keep this in mind. In 2003, okay, Mayor Daly came down and said, we're gonna preserve all these green areas, we're gonna restore them and they're gonna be beautiful. We were happy. They are assets. 2019, and we're still, still building these parks. Why is it taking so long? Why? Okay, I have one question. Does anybody know where the funds are for that Ford Environmental Center designed by Gene Gang, where they said they had some of the money, but they couldn't raise all the money? Does anyone know where that money is now? No, because it's hidden and somebody probably spent it. I'm Walmart. <laughs> okay, next one. Mary Bird's natural area again. Here we are. Okay. This is the bike park at 118th and Stoney. It could be a wonderful thing, but it looks pretty scraggly again. Why? Because they're piecemealing these things together as they try to raise funds. And you know, why is why don't we get a billion dollar tip to do that? I wanna know. Where's our billion dollar tip? Okay. Dog park, uh -huh. it's a new development. Ooh. Problem is, I think it doesn't get used enough. A lot of hard work went into that dog park, I will say that. But sometimes I think we're misguided as to where we should put our big efforts. Think, yeah. And can I just say, since I'm on the dog park committee, and this, this was my baby that I don't want to look at. Um, it was originally supposed to be twice the size, and because it's tiny, as you can see, it's teeny tiny. The original design was supposed to be twice the size. Um, we fought for every single area, much better. You know, Cal Park is big, so that's where it ended up. This dog park cost $185,000 of, of taxpayer money. I want people to really understand that. We want $100,000 in menu money, because we just wanted the abandoned tennis courts to make it in a dog park, like Jackson Park and Hyde Park, you know, that, that makeshift one. It's all we wanted. They said no, Park District took over. The design that was twice the size was going to be $200,000 after the fact. We didn't have the money. And all of a sudden, the Park District came up with $85,000 and said, we'll build it for one eighty-five, dollars but we have to cut the size in half. It's technically not even open. I believe we emailed the Alderwoman, and I don't know if we have a response, as to when the official grand opening can be, so we can at least invite the community, maybe who has small dogs, to come and enjoy this park. But this park cost the taxpayers $185,000. So while people may think that that's what we wanted, we just want to let everybody know it's not what we wanted. We just wanted an asset in the southeast side that you typically see up north because we were tired of the disparities and we thought everybody has dogs, not just yuppies on the north side, but this, this, is, this is what we got and this cost $185,000, just so everybody knows. Okay, so Dog Park, that is another one of our recent developments. Yeah. Storage facility. 
Okay, storage facility. How many jobs do we think that's going to provide? Not a whole lot, right? It takes up a lot of space. I think that could have been used better for a work training center or something like that, but we have done a storage facility. Hey, you can live there with you. Uh, kidney care. Now, this is, this. I'm not going to say this is bad, okay? This is not meant to be bad, but it's just that these are the kind of developments that we get excited about because not much else happens here, okay? Biomat. I don't know if there's a need for this or not. I don't know. I'm not familiar with it that well, but that is a development. It's a development. So let's take a look at now. We're just going to look at the other part of the city. So we're on the south side. Now we're going to take a quick, really quick look at the north side because we're trying to stay on task here. What I'm trying to show you here is this is a vision for Pullman. Community got together. But this is what I want you to note. It says here, how many people participated in the visioning? 800. Look around you here. We're trying to do a visioning. We're trying to look around you in Lincoln Park at 800 people. And this is something we want you to take away from here. We've got to become engaged. We've got to take on some responsibility for what goes on in our community. Change it. Lincoln Yards, beautiful place. That's why they're kicking out General Iron. <laughs> General Iron, could you imagine General Iron sitting in the middle of that? It's not going to happen. It's a beautiful Shangri-La of a place. A place you'd want to walk, a place you'd want to be outdoors, a place you'd want to ride your bikes, a place you'd want to shop. We don't have any of that here. Do we ride our bikes? Do we walk? Do we shop here? No. North Branch, look at that. I want you to think about our Calumet River where you see piles of salt, piles of scrap. That's going to be their river. Big difference, big difference. This is the plan for our Calumet River, really quick. Calumet River is a key freight connection between Lake Michigan and the rest of the Chicago area waterway system. The Calumet Industrial Corridor will become renowned national model for the coexistence of productive and sustainable industry. Did we see any industry on the North Branch photo we just saw? No. Okay. It's going to be thriving, thriving communities and healthy natural areas. To do so, the region must work to attract more job-rich manufacturers that rely on the waterways and barge shipping while encouraging industrial stakeholders to proactively mitigate negative impacts on the environment and public health. I say the presence of scrap metal yards has a negative impact on us and you cannot mitigate that. Okay, you cannot. So this is what's planned for us is that what we want to see? Are we okay with it? Is that good development? This is what you're here to think about, and we want you to give us your input, understand what's going on other places, compare it. Is it acceptable? Is it equitable? Ask yourself. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Peggy. Um, really appreciate that. And that's just to give us some perspective about what's going on across the city. Um, because it's not just what's happening here on the southeast side, but what's happening across the city. And what is it that we actually want here? And what is it that we don't want here? So we want to make sure, the whole point of today uh, is to make sure that the community has a voice and that we come together and figure out what it is we want together. There's two of them. Halfway through, 
I'll ask, I'll give you uh, time so that you guys can switch to other questions. But the first round of questions is, what would you consider good development? And what would you like to see in the new development on the southeast side? Okay, so this could be anything or everything that you want. Okay? So I know at the last meeting, some of you are like, we were stuck in four different workshops. You could put stuff in there like that, or you could create some new things for what you would like to see on the southeast side. So you might get down to specifics like community center, or things like that that we did not talk about last time, but it's up to you. Um, your time starts now, and you'll have 15 minutes. So the question was, what's a boundary? I think it, it, it's what we define it as. Um, our boundaries have expanded in the time that we have talked when we first started talking about development. So originally our uh, boundary was from Hyde Park all the way to the city limits, so to uh, head, head wishing South Dairy, as far west as Chatham. Um, but we are now working with the groups that are um, all the way in the Washington Heights um, and Roseland. So really the coalition is, all the coalition is, is made up of groups who are willing to work on local developments on the southeast side. So I think we can, we can, we are constantly redefining those boundaries, but it's up to us to define them. It's a group. Alright, so did you want to report back? Alright, and uh, maybe just the highlights? So, um,
Oh, sorry. <laughs>
for development is the fact that they have an abundance right now of federal opportunity zones, um, you know, you can say some tip dollars are in the area, and those type of tax breaks are attractive for development, and especially the kind of developments that we're looking for that, you know, need to, need to take a risk, but might not want to, um, have, might not necessarily have the financial ability to really, you know, break ground like an established community or established business, but with those types of incentives, they may be willing to take a risk on our community. So those are some of the things that make our, our area particularly unique and attractive towards development. Um, and we do a tax base that has some disposable income given the amount of union workers, city workers, and private sector workers that are still living in the area as of now.
think of more uh, leadership, like political leadership. I feel like we demand a little bit more from our community, our leaders. I mean, maybe they all have a, a then maybe developers will see if they have a, a vested interest in the community, and maybe they want to attract more development in the community. So I would think no more.
once we got our priorities and what our vision is for our community, we would have the developers app so that any developer that comes into the, into the community, we would encourage them to the developers app so that the community knows what the vision is for their development and that we can weigh in based on our priorities and say, yes, we like this development, they're doing both for hiring, they're doing one other thing, they're, they're working with us, they're awesome. Or we can say, you know what, we don't like this development. It's going to bring in, uh, uh, it's going to pollute our land, they aren't working with us, and they have no commitment to local hires, right? These documents give us some say um, and also.